Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless a picture is worth a thousand words so what do you think biden's saying here mr president can you tell us sir donald trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly what's your response to that sir do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign We'd love to hear your thoughts, sir. That sinister grin may as well have been a confession. Later, he was questioned by Peter Ducey. Do you think this conviction helps Trump in the election? Are you worried that this could happen to you someday? Somebody comes up with some charges and tries to bring you into court after your term? And when Trump says you're just trying to bruise him, what do you say? Politically, politically. He thinks you're pulling the strings behind the scenes, doing all this to help yourself. I didn't know I was that powerful. Mr. President, can you tell us, sir, Donald Trump refers to himself as a political prisoner and blames you directly. What's your response to that, sir? Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? Do you think the conviction will have an impact on the campaign? I didn't know I was that powerful. Proverbs 29.2 When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan. Democrats have been fantasizing about convicting Trump since 2015. They didn't have a crime yet, but knew they'd cook one up. So after a Manhattan jury, Biden donor judge and liberal prosecutors finally made it happen, they couldn't contain themselves. Our team has heard that there were cheers inside the Biden headquarters in Wilmington as the verdict was read. After the Biden team was done partying, they started passing around the hat. Biden blasted out text messages. This is the perfect time to make your first donation. Hillary Clinton popped out of the woods to start selling mugs that say, turns out she was right about everything. From Mr. Trump's 2016 opponent, Hillary Clinton, at an event in Washington, a not-so-subtle nod to Thank the news. So much. Anything going on today? The media celebrated like it was Christmas. So I'm going to say something you've never, ever heard me say before, but <laughs> Donald John Trump... Don't tell me. <laughs> is a convicted, convicted felon. <laughs> it's a majestic day, and we are rightly saying the system worked like clockwork. This is a really about our democracy in a shining moment led by a um, really eminent, <laughs> wonderful judge. I take great pride in what's happened because I feel it's such a sweet vindication of the rule of law. I got so excited I started leaking a little bit. <laughs> Who are they so happy for? If a murderer is found guilty, sure you celebrate. You're happy for the victim's family, I guess. And you're happy the killer's off the streets. But who's the victim here? There is no victim because this is no crime. They're just happy for themselves because their lives in between Trump losses and getting vaccinated, don't seem that happy. Democrats have been claiming the justice system has been rigged for decades. It's racist. Millions of people of color, the poor, can't get fair trials because of dirty DAs and biased judges. And now when Trump says the trial was rigged, they say, oh, no, 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 you can't say that. It's reckless. It's dangerous. It's irresponsible for anyone to say this was rigged just because they don't like the verdict. No matter how much Joy Behar leaks or how much money Biden raises, it's going to come down to you. What do you think about the trial? I find it absolutely insane. It kind of blows my mind. Can you say Banana Republic? I think 
think it's a complete failure of our justice system, and it's a complete Joe Biden, Kamala Harris hit job. I, I'm shocked that he keeps going. So I will say he's, you know what, God bless him for, for keep on trucking. And it's not just middle class voters. Patriotic billionaires are now lining up behind Trump again. Casino barons, hedge fund CEOs, tech investors, all rallying around the former president. Elon Musk, who's been wrangling his rich friends to stop Biden, says, quote, great damage was done today to the public's faith in the American legal system. If a former president can be criminally convicted over such a trivial matter, motivated by politics rather than justice, then anyone is at risk of a similar fate. Even people who do not believe in Jesus Christ and the end times know something is very wrong with our world. As of late, I have been hearing from so many people that 2024 will be the year when America goes over the edge. We are on the verge of World War III. Our financial system is teetering on the brink of disaster. Homelessness is rising at the fastest pace ever recorded. Drug and alcohol abuse are off the charts. Lawlessness runs unchecked. Food banks are facing unprecedented demand for their services. And it's not just happening in the United States, it's happening all over the world. I believe that 2024 will be the most chaotic election year in the entire history of our nation, with many saying the US is heading for civil war. All of this is happening in the global framework of wars and rumors of wars, pestilence, famine, and natural disasters, all of which are happening more frequently and more intensely. A perfect storm is raging all around us. Billions of people have become deeply concerned about what the immediate future will look like. The global agenda for a one world government, a one world financial system, and a one world religion are already set in place. All the world needs now is for the Antichrist to make his appearance onto the world stage. All of this can only point to one fact. The rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the Antichrist are just a heartbeat away from becoming reality. The Bible warns of the times we are living in, and God through his grace and mercy has showed us the end from the beginning. And now his watchmen are blowing the trumpet. Jesus is coming for the believer. No more pain or sorrow, but for the unbeliever, there will be misery and grief. Buckle up and hold on tight. By looking at world events, it seems probable 2024 will be the year when everything converges and with it the rapture, the seven year tribulation, and the revealing of the Antichrist. Luke 2136. Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Are you ready for what comes next? There is a billionaire, Ray Dalio, quoted by the Financial Times. He's saying now that the chances of a civil war in this country are around 35 to 40%. Do you think the chances are that high? I mean, I'm not a, in a place to, to give uh, probabilities or, you know, I don't, I don't gamble. I don't spend my time in Vegas, so I couldn't speak to that. But what I can say is the president has been really clear about the need to uh, continue to fight for our democracy. Uh, that is one of the reasons he jumped into the election back in 2019. Uh, what he was seeing across the country, what we're seeing obviously uh, in Charlottesville, and what he saw there, the vile, the, the hatred, um, and it was concerning to him. And so, but, you know, you move forward and uh, from there to January 6th of 2021, that was a very scary time in our de democracy. That was a stain on our democracy. What we saw happening at the Capitol, a rioters of 2,000 rioters uh, wanting to turn over a free and fair election. So obviously the president wants to continue to fight for that, continue to fight for our democracy, fight for our freedoms, and that's where we're going to continue to stand. I can't give probability. I, I don't even know who, this, who you're speaking of. Okay. The United States is divided on just about every issue. Immigration, race, gay marriage, transgenderism, abortion, and the list goes on. Jesus said that a kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation as we read in Matthew 12, 25. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation 
and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. My question is this, how much time does America have until it is brought to desolation? Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Kentucky high school student denied diploma at graduation after he told his graduating class, Jesus is your answer. John 15, 18 through 20. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you're not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Holding it is um, just to answer prayer. That's all it is, just to answer prayer. Five days after graduation, Micah Price sat down with his Campbell County High School principals to explain why he veered from his approved graduation speech to give his classmates a lesson about God. He originally didn't receive his diploma because of it. I will do it again times two. Administrators approved the student speeches before graduation. This part of his speech was approved. I must give the honor, the praise, and the glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But this part was not. He is the light, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, class, anyone in the audience today, I'm here to tell you that if you don't have any of those things in your life, you can't seem to find the answer, that my Lord and Savior is your answer. He will give you the truth. Did you originally write that in the script and they cut it out? I, uh, I, had, that my, I had that in my script um, and they told me that I was, it would, they said that it was a public institution and they did not want to um, divide their audience or my audience because I was speaking. In a statement, Campbell County Superintendent Shelley Wilson said in part, quote, off program choices such as speech, signs, caps, etc., in support of any cause, any religion, injecting inappropriate language, political election statements, etc., could lead to something other than this outpouring of Christian faith. When I asked Wilson more specifically why Micah wasn't allowed to include that part in his speech, she didn't have any further comment at that time. Micah's story is dividing the internet. One person responded to the local 12's Facebook post saying, quote, bless this boy standing up for his Christian faith. Another said, quote, he learned a tough lesson. Rules and policies are in place for a reason. I agree with both. I went against the rules. I should be punished. Like I should have my diploma held. But also I can simply not enter a place or a building and not talk about my savior and urge people to give their life to him. Romans 10, 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. At one point, Micah thought he was going to have to go before the entire school board to discuss his actions. That didn't happen. He now plans to serve in the Air Force and leaves for boot camp in July. He tells me this whole experience has also encouraged him to consider ministry either in the military or in Campbell County. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. Jesus prophesied of future plagues associated with the last days, as we read in Luke 21.11. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines and pestilences, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. For the first time, the CDC confirms a person infected with bird flu in the United States has acute respiratory symptoms. It is the third human case tied to the dairy cattle H5N1 outbreak, and the second case 
in a dairy farm worker in Michigan. Federal health officials say the latest person with the virus had direct exposure to infected cattle. They say there is still no evidence of human-to-human -human spread. Dr. Celine Gounder is a CBS News medical contributor and editor-at-large for public health at KFF. Good morning. Good to see you. So, Dr. Gounder, this farm worker exhibited respiratory systems, uh, symptoms, rather, unlike the first two human cases. So what do we need to know about this one? Well, what's really important here is to understand that if it's respiratory, it's easier to transmit onward to other people. So if the virus is just in the eye, that's going to be harder to pass on to others. If it's in your respiratory system, you're coughing, it's going to be easier to spread around. So who is at most risk of getting bird flu? Well, the risk to the general public is still considered to be very low by the CDC. However, we do know that farm workers are being exposed very heavily. And so if somebody is a farm worker, especially if they're working with dairy cows, they are at risk for H5N1 bird flu. So we need to keep pointing out that uh, this was cattle to human, but there has not yet been a case of human-to-human -human, uh, transfer of bird flu. But is that something you worry about? Well, that's an important distinction. So, yes, so far all the cases have been cow or some other animal to human, historically speaking. Uh, we are not aware of any human-to-human -human cases ever having occurred. But that is precisely how you get the next epidemic or pandemic, is if the virus mutates, adapts to humans, where it can spread human-to-human. And if that were to happen, do we have uh, the capacity to manufacture vaccines to combat that? This is a big concern because our flu manufacturing is based on eggs. Bird flu kills birds. Birds lay eggs. So your whole manufacturing uh, process is really in jeopardy, potentially, from the very virus you're trying to combat. So we really do need to develop alternatives to the egg-based manufacturing. And anything happening is a matter of when, not if. So we need to have a placeholder for that. For the disease we don't know, that may come. And that was when we gave the name Disease X. Members of the World Health Assembly gathering in Geneva have rejected a proposed agreement that many people believe would have undermined the sovereignty of nations. The idea was to give the World Health Organization additional authority to respond globally in the event of another COVID-19-like pandemic. Well, early last year when this proposal, which, by the way, is a treaty, first came up, I spoke with Reggie Littlejohn, president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers and co-chair of the Stop Vaccine Passport Task Force. I asked what approval of the proposal would mean for people worldwide. I believe that it will mean the establishment of a, a, a worldwide totalitarian biotech state. It gives the WHO authority over the global supply chain, trade, commerce. Uh, through establishment of the WHO Global Pandemic Supply Chain and Logistics Network. WHO Director, uh, Director General uh, Tedros would lead that effort early on in the pandemic. You remember Tedros praised President Xi Jinping for China's efforts to control the outbreak. So your thoughts on him and his potential control of the supply chain? Well, uh, T Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus is very closely aligned with the Chinese Communist Party, and the Chinese Communist Party has absolutely outsized uh, influence at the World Health Organization, uh, which is why they were able to get away with all the lies that they did, which were just amplified by uh, Dr. Tedros. So this is, uh, is not a good alliance at all. And in terms of the supply chains, they, they are also wanting to take um, control over the intellectual property. Like if somebody in the United States or another country develops a great vaccine, they're, they're going to be forced to share that information. So continue to keep your eyes and ears open on this one. Attempts will be made to revive it. Like Russia's Grigory Rasputin, this may be the treaty that will never die. These striking images of Chinese warships off the coast of Taiwan this month, a dire warning of a potential invasion that could disrupt the global technology supply chain, plunge the world into an economic catastrophe, and start a hot war between the U.S. and China. And according to one geopolitics expert, an actual invasion could be over before the U.S. even has a chance to respond. So a lot of people assume that this would be sort of a Normandy type of beach landing. The reality is that terrain does not allow it. Dmitry Alperovitch predicted the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And now, in a new book, he lays out how China could seize Taiwan. 
First, he says, the Chinese would mount a lightning fast assault from the air and the sea. You're still going to move amphibious assault ships across the strait. Each of them can deliver about 800 troops and more importantly, dozens of troop transport helicopters as well as gunships to do an airborne assault. They can reach uh, the two airports within 10 to 15 minutes. They can do that by parking them in international waters. And Taiwan would feel constrained from firing first because that would be seen as provoking a war. You're going to have these transport ships, uh, mostly civilian vessels, and have been loaded with hundreds of thousands of troops, armored vehicles, tanks, logistics that you need to occupy an island of 23 million people. To cover the attackers, Alperovitch says, China would strike Taiwan's defenses from afar. You're going to have bombers launched from the mainland. You're going to have the largest uh, cruise uh, missile and ballistic missile uh, and rocket forces in the world pummeling fixed radar installations, pummeling naval facilities, pummeling uh, communication nodes. Then, he predicts, Chinese Marines in huge airboats would rush up the river leading to the center of the capital city, Taipei. All of this can happen literally within the first 30 minutes of action. All the while, he says, the U.S. president facing an awful choice. Allow the aggression to stand or launch a war that could kill more Americans than World War II. So why is Taiwan so vital to U.S. and global interests? One reason, Taiwan manufactures almost 70% of the world's semiconductors, those tiny boards used in everything from phones and laptops to life-saving medical devices and the vast server networks that power American industry. And if China invades, experts say, the U.S. or Taiwan is likely to destroy those factories, which would spell economic disaster for much of the world. Or if China manages to capture the factories and keep them operational, it would leap ahead in the world's most important technologies. Alperovitch says that would harm American prosperity and security. But so would a war with China. In the first year of that war, global depression right off the bat. And that assumes it doesn't go nuclear. That's right. Intelligence agencies and military leaders have been warning for years that China is working on plans to seize Taiwan by force. The admiral in charge of U.S. Pacific Command told Congress in March that, quote, all indications point to the People's Liberation Army meeting Xi Jinping's alleged goal of potentially invading Taiwan by 2027. We haven't faced a threat like this since World War II. China has spent the last two decades modernizing its military to be able to destroy American ships in the Pacific. You're going to lose ships. You're going to lose a lot of sailors. You're going to lose thousands, potentially even tens of thousands of American troops. Alperovitch says the U.S. must make containing China the focus of its foreign policy. The United States has to make it clear to them that the cost of this conflict are going to be too huge for the Chinese economy. He says that means ending U.S. reliance on China for things like critical minerals and solar panels. And it means arming Taiwan in a way that would make an invasion much more painful than it would be today. All to influence the calculations of the Chinese president. We want him to wake up every single day and look at himself in the mirror as he's shaving and say, today is not the day. There was another big headline from the White House today. President Biden endorsed a new Israeli proposal for a ceasefire in the Gaza-Hamas war. It is the first time the president has spoken about the conflict since Sunday's deadly explosion at a tent camp for refugees in Rafah, where Israel is currently expanding its offensive in spite of international pressure. We want to show you this new video is of Israeli tanks and troops moving further into the city. That's a place where fleeing refugees were told to evacuate to. President Biden made clear today it is time for the conflict to end. It's time for this war to end, for the day after to begin. President Biden's endorsement of a new ceasefire plan came a day after a top Israeli security official said his country is preparing for at least seven more months of war. The president said the latest proposal may be the best chance for peace. It's a roadmap to an enduring ceasefire and the release of all hostages. The three-phased plan, transmitted by Israeli officials to Hamas leadership by Qatar, would start with a six-week ceasefire, new direct talks on a permanent end to the war, a withdrawal of Israeli military forces from Gaza population centers, and the release of elderly and female hostages by Hamas in exchange for hundreds of Palestinians in Israeli custody. And 600 trucks of desperately needed humanitarian aid would be allowed into Gaza each day. Hamas says it wants a ceasefire. This deal is an opportunity to prove whether they really mean it. 
Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said his coalition government authorized the ceasefire proposal, but he said the war won't end until hostages are returned and the elimination of Hamas's military and governmental capabilities. The president suggested Netanyahu's goal isn't possible, but... At this point, Hamas no longer is capable of carrying out another October 7th. It's one of the Israel's main objectives in this war, and quite frankly, a righteous one. And he called on those who've taken to the streets around the world to protest the war to direct their pressure at Hamas. And let the leaders know they should take this deal. The president is heading to France next week to mark the D-Day anniversary and to meet with leaders likely to also push him to help broker peace. And congressional leaders are inviting Prime Minister Netanyahu to address a joint session of Congress before their August recess in the coming weeks. The northeast of Ukraine is being pounded by Russian missiles and bombs. This is the smoking, wasted city of Vovchansk, sitting in the firing line of the Kremlin's new offensive. A major turn on Ukraine, a major reversal from the White House tonight. The Biden administration giving Ukraine permission now to strike inside parts of Russia with American-made weapons for the first time. Tonight, with the Russian assault on Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, intensifying, the Biden administration has made a major reversal allowing U.S. supplied weapons to be fired inside Russia. For years, the administration balked at the idea, fearing a strike on Russia itself with U.S.-made weapons could draw the U.S. into direct conflict with Russia. U.S. officials insisting tonight the U.S. weapons will be used only to strike Russian military sites that are being used to launch weapons into Kharkiv. More than a dozen other Western countries have also approved weapons being used inside Russia. But Vladimir Putin already with a threatening response, calling it an escalation, another step towards a serious conflict in Europe and around the globe. It will be the Pentagon that will coordinate exactly where the weapons can strike inside Russia. But David, there is no question this is a big change. Despite the U.S. government's limited, calibrated approach, a senior Russian official responded today saying that NATO countries that supply long-range weapons to Ukraine are already participating in a war with Russia. And he reiterated Russia's threat to use tactical nuclear weapons against Ukraine. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos as punishment for sharing his faith in Jesus Christ. The Lord gave John a series of visions which described things that would take place in the last days. The visions John saw were recorded and are now known as the book of Revelation. Throughout the scriptures, terrible times are forecast for the end of this present age. The prophet Isaiah describes the earth as empty and wasted. Isaiah 24.1 Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste distorts its surface, and scatters abroad its inhabitants. In the book of Revelation, we read of an hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. The Lord Jesus warns us of great tribulation which shall threaten the survival of all life on earth. Matthew 24, 21 and 22. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Apostle Paul speaks of sudden destruction that shall come just when men are saying, Peace and safety. First Thessalonians 5 3. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. As these verses indicate, along with current events, make it plain that world conditions will be characterized by chaos, destruction, and death just before our Lord returns to take control of planet Earth. In the book of Revelation, we read about the poisoning of the oceans, the burning up of the grass and the trees, and the sun scorching people with great heat. The book of Revelation also tells us that horrible plagues 
will afflict mankind. There will be widespread wars and famines, and that the atmosphere will become so polluted as to reduce visibility by one-third. In the midst of all this devastation, the Earth's population will flee to the caves as people cry to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of Him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What could possibly bring about such universal carnage on the Earth? Is the Bible describing a nuclear holocaust? Nuclear weapons appear to be specified in Zechariah 14.12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets, and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. The book of Joel gives us detailed imagery that describes something so huge that it seems to encompass the earth and the sky. It is made up of fire and pillars of smoke, and is so vast that it darkens the sun and reddens the moon. Joel 2, 30 and 31 And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Luke 21, 26 through 28 Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear, that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. Occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.